Hey friends, so I am going back to my roots in makeup artistry today and bringing you an Audrey Hepburn inspired look. Now, I love a costume look, let me just say that first, but this is not going to be a costume look. This is going to be a modern take on the Audrey Hepburn look. So this is something you can wear to the office, you can wear it to a party, you can wear it to dinner. That's the beauty of Audrey Hepburn, right? Like we can take her look and translate it to any occasion. It's so versatile. If you like videos about fashion, beauty, lifestyle that is geared toward, you know, practical tips, then please feel free to subscribe and join the fam because we're all about that. If you wanted to skip right ahead to the makeup tutorial, I will go ahead and put a time code on the screen. It will also be linked in the description box, but I just want to start this video off with a little bit of a chat about why we find Audrey Hepburn so iconic, why we're still obsessed with her, why I am obsessed with her. I also wanted to take you through some modern looks that I found just in street style and show you why they still feel very Audrey Hepburn, but they also feel fresh and modern. So first off, why are we still obsessed with Audrey Hepburn's style? I actually saw this question come up in an interview and Audrey Hepburn said that her style essentially is so popular because it's attainable. Anyone can do a ballet flat, a black skinny pan, you know, like a cat eye. You know, there are things like that that translate to whoever you are and it doesn't have to cost a fortune. There's also obviously the fashion that came with it. I really love that she talked about loving to wear fashion and, and pretty clothes and all of these things that she didn't have growing up. We, we know that she survived World War II during the Dutch Rebellion and saw what she you know, described as the worst the world had to offer. It really does come through in her empathy for people, her work with UNICEF, her kindness, and the way she treated anyone she interacted with. So I think it's a combination of so many different things. And I wanna show you some images that really show how you can take the Audrey Hepburn style and make it your own. So with this first look, I was just sort of scrolling through Google images. I typed in all black outfit and this really stood out to me as a modern take on the Audrey Hepburn look. Like it, it has sneakers and it has a slouchy bag, you know, these are things that we don't normally think of when we think of Audrey Hepburn style. But I think that the silhouette and the cut of that sort of top is very Audrey Hepburn. It's a little bit of a bodycon style, but also a slouchy style. I really like that it's a bit of a relaxed look. It feels very effortless, especially with the sneakers. We know Audrey Hepburn loved a flat. I really like how the sneakers are paired with this outfit. Also with the slouchy bag, you know, like that it also gives me a relaxed type of feel to the outfit. And the way her hair is just casually thrown back into a ponytail, it looks pretty sleek. She has very minimal makeup. This is very Audrey Hepburn to me, but it also feels very modern. The simplicity of the look with these small details are what, you know, just hit the nail on the head for me. Now, this next look, I could not stop staring at this picture. This woman looks incredible. Um, let's talk about a sort of night and day in terms of silhouette. You know, like this, this top is more of a modern type top. I think it is more structured. The pants are definitely more structured than the last look we saw. And don't worry, I do have some color coming up next. But I love the 50s vibe that this gives me with the pleated pants, with the pointed toe. And then what really modernizes all of this for me is the bag. I love the black and white bag, still very minimal, but it goes along with the outfit and adds that modern touch. Her jewelry as well, beautiful jewelry. She has some color on her nails. It's sort of like, it looks like a putty type of muted green even. And then her makeup, it's not quintessentially Audrey Hepburn. You know, she has a red lip that looks 
fabulous on her. I love her hair. It's giving me sort of Veronica Lake vibes, but her brows, she's got the bold brow. And that is sort of what makes me think of Audrey Hepburn in this look. I can't really tell if she has heels or flats on, but it's very modern. I wouldn't think, you know, this is head to toe Audrey Hepburn. I wouldn't think it was a costume look, but I would think she looks phenomenal. She looks minimal, but she also looks very glamorous and put together, which is sort of that perfect balance of what Audrey Hepburn had in her style. And last but not least, we have Morgan Hoffman. She is a host on ET Canada. And I was just, casually watching this the other day. I don't know about you, but I have been really into watching commentary about pop culture lately. I saw Morgan Hoffman wearing this outfit and thought it is everything that is right about a modern Audrey Hepburn look. It's not just about a cat eye. Um, she has a sort of 60s style hairdo going on that reminds me of Funny Face. You know, when she's doing that dance in an all black outfit with the white socks and black shoes in, in the nightclub, and she's doing this sort of like, um, like this 60s poetry thing. And that's what this hairdo reminds me of. She's doing the side bangs in a way that looks really flattering on her, but she has a ponytail sort of midway on the back of her, her head. And it's a perfect example of her taking what looks good on her and making it her own. And she's also done a mock turtleneck in a color that isn't black. Again, it has this mustard color, very flattering on her skin tone and the, the turtleneck isn't super high, it's a mock turtleneck, so it's, it's sort of midway down, a little bit more casual. I also love her earrings. I think that is a very, you know, like, I like this type of, type of jewelry, I like this element, let me mix it in. I'm sure she has a full face of makeup on, she's a host on a television show, but it looks very natural aside from the eyes. She is wearing false lashes and, you know, do that if that works for you but everything about this screams, yeah, this is Audrey Hepburn vibes. I'm gonna kind of subliminally, you know, like put that into your head, you know, that that this is very Audrey Hepburn style, but you're not gonna look at her and think that she has totally tried to transform into Audrey Hepburn. It's still Morgan that we're seeing. And I think the overall thing to keep in mind when you're doing either a makeup or an outfit emulating a Hollywood icon is take their style, definitely take their style, steal their style, do what you want with it, but take the parts that look good on you. If I'm going to contour my face and try to thin out my nose or make it look longer, you know, like that's that's not me. That's the way Audrey Hepburn looked, you know? And yes, she was fabulous and beautiful and all of these things that, that we love. But if I do that, it starts to not look modern. And that is a look for another time or, you know, maybe you like that look for every day, but if you want something that doesn't take a lot of time, you can just kind of throw on. These are the elements that you can take. Take what you love of hers but keep the things you love to wear that you know look good on you. And it will always be a recipe for fabulous style. So enough talking, let's get into the makeup look. So I'm starting with concealer and this is the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Brighten and Correct Duo. And it's in 2N. I love this because it's just an amazing product. It blends in seamlessly to the skin. It has a corrector on one side and a brightener on the other. Basically, one has a peachier tone so that it cancels out dark circles, and then the other is more of a match to whatever your skin tone is, and that just blends in the corrector. You don't need both of them. I just like to do both or have the option to do both sometimes. And I'm taking the correct side first and just kind of doing an L shape. And then with my finger, I'm just blending it in. And I'm going to use a lot of powder products with this look because for the time, Audrey Hepburn's time, you know, the look that was in was more of a matte 
look, but we will still give some life to the skin with a little bit of cream products as well. So it doesn't look completely matte unless you like that look, you know. And this is the Brighten side. Now I'm taking the Bare Minerals Matte Foundation. And this one has an SPF of 15. I already have sunscreen on. And this is in medium beige or N20. I love this foundation. Of course, it's a mineral foundation, so maybe not for everyone. I don't love mineral foundations on deeper skin tones. Although when, you know, from when I first started using them, the formulations might have gotten better but use whatever foundation you like. I'm just swirling it in the top and I'm just gonna brush it on my skin. I'm not heavy into concealer on my face or liquid foundations on my face because I tend to break out with them. You know, I saw the Audrey Hepburn documentary. It was like Audrey more than an icon and it's playing on Netflix and that really set me down a rabbit hole of watching her films. And it's so funny because I was watching one of her films called Love in the Afternoon and it's it's actually one of my favorite films of hers, but she has this hairdo. It's sort of like curtain bangs with a bob and I love bobs, but this bob had like kind of the bump at the end of it and it was a very difficult hairstyle to pull off and I hadn't really seen it on a lot of people you know from any era of film and she looked so amazing with with even this hairstyle it just like she to me it, it is just incredibly gorgeous and I think a lot of that again has to do with her attitude. I'm going to move on to this glowing pretty skin palette from Charlotte Tilbury. Unfortunately, this palette has been discontinued, but many of these colors are still available and I will put dupes for everything, links, you know, to anything that is available down in the description box. And I'm taking, this is just a Sephora brush. It came in a set of brushes. I'm just gonna do a little bit of bronzer. I'm doing what looks good on me. I'm doing sort of a contour job, sort of not. I'm just taking it around my temples and around my cheekbones, more under them than on top of them. And I think for really, you know, modern Audrey Hepburn makeup, the trick really is to just adapt it to yourself. Like Audrey Hepburn wouldn't have worn bronzer, but I love bronzer, so I'm gonna wear it. I'm also going back and forth between eras of Audrey Hepburn. So you may not think this hard about the look because you're not doing a video for people about it, but one of the things that I love from her films of the 1950s is the cat eye that she has. You can't really see because it's black and white, you know, a lot of eyeshadow. It's more about the flick of the liner. And in her later films, like Breakfast at Tiffany's, she has more of a peachy toned look. She doesn't have very overdrawn lips and she has more of a peachy tone on her cheeks. I think that's very flattering on me. So that's the combination I'm going to do. More of peachy tones on the lips and cheeks, not overdrawn lips and more of a cat eye. So I'm just taking this sort of coral shade and going right on the apples of my cheeks. I'm not using a powder highlighter, especially not the powder highlighter from uh, from this palette because I feel like the powder highlighters from Charlotte Tilbury often emphasize texture and fine lines around the eyes. I mean, I don't really feel like I, I have a lot of fine lines, but I can sort of see them when I use her highlighters. So I'm going to be using something a little bit more balmy. Speaking of which, this is the Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek Stick and this color is perk as you can see it has more of a peachy tone to it and I'm just taking a little bit of that and putting it on top. Putting it right on top of the cheekbone and that's bringing more life back to my face since we're using a lot of matte products and this is more of a cream product. 
Moving on to the eyes, I have the Dolce Vita palette from Charlotte Tilbury. Unfortunately, this has been discontinued. But there actually is another palette called the Bella Sophia palette that looks very similar to this. And there are other palettes that are also very similar to this, especially for what I'm using it for. I'm using the skin tone shade right here. My skin tone shade, obviously, this doesn't match everyone's skin tone. Um, and this is more in a satin or shimmer tone. I want a little bit of light reflection because my eyes, my eyelid space is very limited. I don't have, you know, huge eyelids and I want to draw more attention to my mobile lid. And this is going to help reflect light and make it look a little bit bigger without me having to do a lot of contouring and, and things like that. And I don't use a primer on my eyelids because I don't have time. If you need a primer, then by all means do do one. My eyelids are on the oilier side, but when I'm working with powder eyeshadows, especially ones that are close to my skin tone like this, or maybe a little bit lighter, this is definitely uh, a bit lighter. I, I don't tend to need a primer because I don't need a lot of color to be very vibrant, if that makes sense. And I just applied that with a flat brush and that brush is more densely packed. This is, more of a fluffy brush that is not densely packed. So it's going to give a softer diffusion of color. It's not gonna give like a ton of color in one spot. And I'm using this on the very warm, almost burgundy-ish brown shade right here. I'm just taking a little bit on the brush and I am going to very sparingly put this on the outer, I would say outer half of my eye. Because of my eye shape, I always like to draw things out. So putting it on the outer half of my eye or the outer third of my eye is going to help um, make my eyes look a little bit wider. And it's also going to emphasize this almond shape that my eyes have. And that is very similar to the shape that Audrey Hepburn's eyes had as well. Not trying to completely change my eye shape, but I'm just giving myself little, you know, like suggestions here and there. Um, just taking what I want from her style. And I'm doing it in circular motions. And just sort of buffing. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just adds, as you can see already, a little bit more to the outer corners. And I know maybe this feels like a lot of steps that you don't have time for. I'm doing everything for you that I would normally do if I wanted to go all out on a look, but just take what you want from this. If you only have time for a little bit of blush, a little bit of eyeliner and mascara, you're good to go. Just whatever you need from this, it is here for you. Now I am taking this Maybelline Tattoo Studio Gel Pencil uh, in 900 Deep Onyx just like the blackest black shade they have. This is a gel, so I really like that texture for eyeliner. I don't love a liquid eyeliner. I think they're very difficult to work with. This is much more practical for me. You know, you can sharpen it with a sharpener. It's not mechanical, but there are plenty of, you know, mechanical pe pencils out there. And I am dotting on the outer third of my eye. You can see the difference already. This is giving me more of an Audrey Hepburn type of shape to my eye. It's making it look a little bit bigger on the outer portion. And then I'm just going to flick it out. I did that just by dotting. And it's definitely not perfect. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. What I'm going to do then, I'm just holding my eye taut very gently. I'm not really, you know, like being rough around my eye area. I'm going out, you see a little flick right there. And then going back in. For me, dotting and short strokes have always been the way to go. You can leave it like that if you want. If you have more time, then take a brush like this. This is 
an amazing brush. I cannot stress enough how good this brush is. I hope they still sell it with it. I got this with the Maybelline color tattoo little pot that they used to sell. I've kept it for years. I saw Lisa Eldridge say, I think that this reminded her of a, a Sukiu brush, which I know is much more expensive, but this has lasted me forever. Washed it so many times and it just comes back swinging. It's very densely packed and it has a tiny point at the end that is perfect for blending. And I'm going to use it here just to blend in the eyeliner. Okay, now I'll do the other side and come right back. And they do not, I repeat, do not have to look exactly the same. Although, I mean, today's a pretty good day. They look they look pretty close to me. Another thing that you can do is take a Q-tip and go like that. Um, I just do it with my fingernail. Please don't come for me. I sometimes don't have time to get a Q-tip and that takes two seconds and it just sharpens the line a little bit. Um, and it's really, it's, it's not that hard on my eyes. A little bit of a lash curl. This is just my Shiseido lash curler. I feel like it fits my eye shape really well. I am going in with my L'Oreal Double Extend Beauty Tubes Mascara in Blackest Black. This is the mascara that I have used for years. If they ever discontinue it, I am going to, you know, I'll obviously just like break down and buy another tubing mascara that's more expensive. But this is just so nice because it's so accessible. You just go to you know, the drugstore or the grocery store, and it's always there if you need it. And you, and you know, you're in a pinch and you just need to, to pick it up along with everything else. Now getting into brows, this is super important for an Audrey Hepburn look, even a modern look. I am going to do a Breakfast at Tiffany's style brow, which is very fluffy, you know, arched. It's not going to be super blocky and straight across the way her brows were in the 50s. So this is going to just be about filling in my brows and there's actually a part in breakfast at tiffany's where she's shown filling in her brows with a brow pencil i just she looks so freaking fabulous doing it too i love watching that part of that movie i feel like the style for me is the best part of that movie and also like who knew like if you grew up if you were like a really little kid in the 80s like i was and you watched the a-team who knew that Hannibal was like this beautiful man in Breakfast at Tiffany's? Like what? Like he just looks so, the colors, he's just like a Technicolor dream in that movie. Um, which was a really nice surprise for me watching it for the first time. I'm like, where's his cigar? So I just did my brows. There we go. Now let's talk about this Benefit 24 hour brow setter. And this is in, you know, just a clear... It is so good. You just keep building it up. I mean, obviously, if you are super busy and you don't have time to, to build up your, your brows, like that's totally understandable. This is great because you can build it up quite a lot and your brows will look a lot more fluffy than they did before. Like, if you can see the difference. Like, are kind of... I mean, in my opinion, my, my brow hairs tend to go where they want to, but using this gel, I mean, they kind of don't stand a chance. This is really good at keeping them in place. It will eventually build up to the point where you can see that there's product. So, but it, it takes a really long time to get to that point. Now I have another Charlotte Tilbury product. I am not sponsored by her. Um, I just feel like a lot of her products just lent themselves to this look. This is in the shade Bitch Perfect. It's their K-I-S-S-I-N-G formula and it's a perfect peachy nude. This reminds me of a modern take on, again, the Breakfast in Tiffany at Tiffany's uh, film. My skin tone matches this lip color quite a bit. 
but since it's such a creamy formula it's very easy to put on since it's more of a nudie pink it doesn't have to be completely perfect of course like a red lipstick might have to be i am going to just take this nude lip pencil this is from number seven it's just a pinky nude that matches and just go around like that that just gives it a more finished look and I'm just going to do a tiny bit of powder underneath my eyes, just the, the setting powder. Just because I feel like the shine there is not, you know, like super, super flattering. So this is the finished look. As you can see, it still gives a vibe, but it's not, you know, a carbon copy of Audrey Hepburn, even though we love her so much. There's still a bit of Audrey No in there. Um, so let me just go ahead. I'm gonna take down my hair in a sec just to show you how to further modernize it, but this is how it would look with sort of a slick back hair look, which is very Audrey Hepburn. And then this further modernizes the look. So thank you so much for sharing this time with me. I know time is precious, um, but I really enjoyed putting this look together for you, putting these images together for you, talking about, you know, Audrey Hepburn. And if you want to see me do more Hollywood icons or just iconic people, you know, just people, you know, looks you want to see, please comment below. And also, I would love to know what got you into Audrey Hepburn? What fuels your obsession for Audrey Hepburn? Were you named after her, like me, you know, and feel like your parents had super high <laughs> expectations? You know, did you fall in love with one of her movies as a kid? Tell me about your love for Audrey Hepburn down below, if, if you have the time. Thank you so much again for watching. I will be back with another practical style fashion beauty video for you next time and take care. Okay, bye.